Well, hello, this is Jan from Red Toad Art Studio, and today we are going to work on making a road traffic sign montage. We'll just call it a traffic sign montage, where we use shapes and colors from our traffic signs. In fact, you might like to get on Google and search traffic sign images and you can get all kinds of ideas for shapes to use on this montage. You will need a few things. You'll need a pencil, an eraser. I actually used two sizes of Sharpies on this. I used this little thin fine Sharpie and then I used the fine point which is a fatter Sharpie line. You will need a ruler. Any ruler will do, but I really prefer these, um, let's see if you can see it here, these bendable clear plastic ones because then you can follow these inner lines to make, say, your frame here. It's wonderful for that kind of work. Now, it may be a challenge to find one, but if you ever see one in the store, hey, I'd say pick that up. You will also need... You will also need the medium of your choice for finishing this picture. This is great for markers. You could use colored pencils, but it would take a while. But you can really use colored pencils or watercolor. Very good for acrylics. And um, in this one, I chose watercolor. And I am using a different brand. I'm not using my Crayola brand today. I'm using Shinhan. I'm not sure if that's how you say it. But the Shinhan Professional Watercolor. These are not too expensive, but they are a step up from your Crayola brand. These are for adults. And um, we can complain about Crayola, but you know, Crayola is very limited in what they can use in their materials. Because they make these so children can use them too. They are usable by children and adults, but especially children. And they can't use anything toxic. Where in a lot of our other watercolors, even these, there are toxic materials in these that you don't want to use with children. It even says right on this um, tube to not put in your mouth. And so, yes, we pay a little more for the better watercolors. And there's reasons, because they can use different materials in them. But you could still use your Crayola brand watercolors in this. It just might not be as intense because I find that these better paints are very intense. Look how intense that red and green and these blues are. They're very intense. Okay, let's see. There's a couple more things. Speaking of that, then you will need to pick your paper to go along with what you are going to finish this with. Now, I used a mixed media this time. That way, after I had done my drawing, then I could decide what I want to use because I could use any of those things I mentioned. But if I just drew this on sketch paper or copy machine paper, I would have to limit myself to um, colored pencils, crayons. You can use marker, though, if you don't mind it bleeding through. But if we go mixed media, we can also add the, the markers and the watercolors. Uh, I'm probably even some acrylics, but I would go at least watercolor paper or a canvas for acrylics. This would make a neat big project to hang on your family room wall. Then it's a good idea to go ahead and go to our website, redtoadartstudio.com, and download our templates. I have found that this stop sign shape is really hard to just freehand. Now you can do it, and if you don't mind that it's not absolutely perfect, go for it. But it's still, it's just a tricky one. So I have um, some templates for the octagon for stop signs. Here's circle templates. Rectangles, there's a lot of rectangle signs out there. Squares. Triangles and arrows. Yield signs. And I added stars. I'm not sure that that's on um, any of our road signs, but you know they would be fun to add. So you can download these and then cut them out and lay them on your paper and see how you like the looks and how you'd like them to fit and try all different kind of designs with these.
I think that's all you need. So I think we should just get started. The first thing I like to do is make a little frame around it. And I do that with my clear ruler. And this is what I like the clear ruler. I can see right through to see if I've got a straight line. And I'm going to do these not all that heavy because I'm going to be inking it later and painting it or whatever you choose for yours. Just know that you will need to do a lot of erasing, so don't get too heavy. And you may not want this frame. This is entirely up to you. All right, there's our frame. Now, I have looked through and cut out a road sign, a stop sign shape to use, a circle shape, in fact, I have three circle shapes here, and these are numbered. These came from the circle page, and you'll see I used one, three, and six. This came from the octagonal page, and I used number one, and I did use a number three right down here. And then the rest I did freehand or used my ruler. So the idea is to lay these out on your sheet, get an idea where your biggest shapes will lie, and it's okay, you want to overlap to add interest. So my circle here overlaps. In fact, this was my main circle and this did the arrow over the top. You can see this was a big circle. See, get that in the, right there. While wow, this is this circle. So it took two circles, drew that one first and then put this one over the top. This was for this down here. These were for my lights on my stoplight that were drawn right through the center. And the rest I freehanded or used my ruler, and I'm sure you can do that. And you can freehand these too if you want. Put them in any order you like. Cut out several of these templates and lay them on your sheet. And if you are doing a bigger one, you can put a lot more on there and get some really interesting designs. And just remember, these don't have to come out exactly like the road signs. This is just inspired by road signs, and we're calling this a road sign montage. So let's start drawing some of these. For me, my most important shape was the stop sign. I really wanted a stop sign. So I just cut that out, and I'm going to lay it here. It's going to line up with the edges of my frame I'm just going to lightly trace it out. Now this is an art project that will take you some time. Plan to work on this probably for several days and then just enjoy the process. Oops, I forgot one there. No problem. We'll go put that one in. So that will be where my stop sign sits. Now I'm going to take my circle, my smaller circle. Let's see, I've already got smudges, don't I? All right. Now, have you seen these? And it'll be easier if you saw this in color. This is one of those red circles with a line across it. That means don't do this. So it will look really neat when we put this will look really neat when we put color in it. And over this is a no U-turn, which is usually, well, I guess it's black. You can either do this black or yellow. I like doing this in a nice yellow that looks like the uh, yield signs and things like that. Anyway, so that's what this is. This is a no U-turn sign. These, you know, I'll be honest. I found these on the images, but I'm not sure I've ever seen these be used. They might be more popular in another country, but I did think these little cars were cute, so I added those to this. You know, if we have airplanes, we should have little cars, right? So I'm going to place this 
And I want this circle just to come up against my frame line here. And just kind of eyeball it with enough room to put in your arrow. And then lightly trace this out. There we go. So let's just freehand where we want this no turn arrow to go and it's going to wrap itself right around this circle now I did use a template for this last time I did it but the way I have put this smaller circle in this time it doesn't really want to do it and work so I free handed it in and now I can smooth it perhaps with this circle you know, it didn't need a whole lot of smoothing. Just in case. And there we go. That works good. Some of these you'll just have to try until you get it the way you want it to be. Now come down to what would be about the middle of this line for our arrow. And make the point of your arrow. About like that. There we go. See that? Now for this circle, we want to make an inner circle for the uh, red don't do it sign. You can freehand that, I'm sure. We don't want to get too uptight about everything have, having to be perfect. I have noticed on pictures, if you start using a ruler, and sometimes we just need to to get things straight, it shows up every little squiggle then on our freehand work that isn't straight. So um, if you can get by without using a ruler at all, that's wonderful. I can't seem to do that. Now, this drawing does take a little bit of time. There we go. I have that circle. And then I'm going to make about halfway across. And I think this is about the center of my circle. I need to make the line across. And then our two little cars can sit there. It probably means no parking. But they're parking. Uh-oh. I think they might be in trouble. Okay. Now let's come over here to our stop sign. And our stop signs, if you notice, will have a border on them. So let's get our border drawn in. Take your time. I try to hurry a little bit on our videos so that you don't have to um, watch forever to get your instructions. But sometimes I probably do hurry a little too much. Okay, across here. This was a little bit too fat. Let's get it changed back to the right width. About right here. Up we go. Okay, now in the middle of this, I want to put the circles for our stop lights. So kind of eyeball it and get these as near to the uh, center as you can. In fact, I'm going to start out with the center one. That's pretty centered. You know, I'm going to draw just a little bit of a line down the center so I can keep them straight. Okay. You could also use a coin. A quarter would probably be just perfect for this. And then we put one above it. 
and one right below it. And I know my hand is covering up what I'm doing. I keep forgetting and I uh, don't keep my work as visible as you probably need it. There we go. And one below it. go. Now let's go for the rest of our main shapes quickly. This um, rectangle, this represents rep rectangle signs. Hmm. Yes, I had brought this down a lot lower than I did in my other one, so I don't want this rectangle as big as I did it before, but I'm going to use it as a uh, template anyway. I'd like to bring it about that far. So here we go. Now I like to interweave these borders when we have them to give it an interesting look. So I'm going to have the border around this sign go over our red right here. So I'll erase the red. Let it go underneath. And then under this one. Now you can do that as you please. If you notice, almost all of your traffic signs have a border around them. Not all of them, but a lot of them. There's a line I need to get rid of that doesn't need there we go okay let's see what else let's get in our our lines now these lines I know you've seen them if something's danger stay away from it or caution they'll have stripes that are yellow, yellow and black or orange and black depending on where you're at and that's what these are and I do find a ruler helps to put those in so, I'm going to go the same angle as this line of my stop sign. Let's, let's do it this way. And then just kind of lightly draw in your lines. Again, take your time and do this neatly. And there's my lines. Let's see. Let's finish a line going up. Let's see. Do we want that line to go up? Let's see what we did on this one. Let's just leave it like that. We need to finish this line. There we go. And this line. Clear down to the bottom. There we are. Now, let's see. We got our main shapes in. We don't have our arrow in. And the arrow is coming off of this right here. Let's see. Right. How shall we do it? Let's come up with it here. And we're going to let part of this arrow go off the edge. I like to go off the edge every once in a while. It makes for real interest. So there's our arrow. And we can let it go that way or we can shorten it. I think I'll cut it right there. Again, all these little decisions are entirely up to you. Now we have spots that we need to do a little filler with. And again, you may find some that you really want to use and use whatever you want this is your picture so let's just start up here in the corner I added a little plane and I'm not sure my plane ended up more like a whale I think because I like fish <laughs> but that's all right if you look online you can get an idea how to draw that plane is with a long oval clear to the corner here
you've got wings that come out like this. Try to keep them the same. And then this the tail things here on the end. Now I'm sure there's a word for that. And mine look funny every time I draw them. Hey, that's all right. It's my plane and my picture. We also did an interesting little um, frame, kind of, around our stoplights like this that hold your stoplights in. And surrounds the three and brings them into a set together. Easily enough done by hand. And rotate your paper as you need to give you an easier way to draw things. Sometimes bringing towards us, moving our pencil towards us, helps us do a better job. Whatever is good for you. Now, if you look at your uh, stoplights, they kind of got some type of ridgy pattern. So let's just add these lines across like this, down the middle of the light section. And then depending on how wide you make these, two or three of these on each one. Again, just do these freehand. Don't get too uptight about your work. Sometimes we get so uptight about perfection, we can't enjoy our art. And we do art, I hope, because we enjoy it. If it is not enjoyable, there is really no reason to do it. Now, let's switch this and do the same thing going crosswise now. And it gives your lights a nice little texture. There we go. Now, just for cuteness sake, I added a little thing up here for a hanger. Just a little round circle. And you can do that or not do that as you would like. Now, I also wanted to make a strip of color uh, for the dashes that go down the middle of our highways. The, the yellow rectangles. And again, let's just make that with... Our ruler, draw a long um, lines and then just make your squares out of that. About that long. And then we'll erase those extra lines. We'll get about three of them there. Yeah. And then erase that way. And you'll have fact, I didn't do very good. You'll have your dashes. Just like that. Let's make this one longer. <laughs> so, I'm going to reinforce those lines a little bit. So. so, those are the lines going down the center of your highway. Alright, now, let's, um, Let's put these little cars in over here. <laughs> I think they're so cute. And they're not that hard to draw. Kind of, you want one on each side of the center line. So draw a little rectangle with rounded corners. And leave a space above the line because the tires need to go there. 
So it's kind of our no parking sign. A cab is a, well, like a half circle above that. The cab of your car or your truck. And then a little curve where the window would be, the back windshield. And then under those where they come down, just draw little lines for your tires. And then you will, when you fill this in and color it, you will erase that little extra line that's between the between the uh, part of the car and your tires. Now, can you see that pretty good? Alrighty. Now, I find one thing I have trouble with, and I don't think I'll ever get better at it. I have two things, and I'm trying to draw them alike. I just can't seem to do it. If you would I'd like to add one more thing to this picture, which would be cute, you could add a couple dots for tail lights. Just like that. I have seen some of them with the tail lights in. Let's do some additions to this. Um, this is the one I think that stands for camping. It's it's like a drawing of a tent looks like this. So come down here, draw a line across. If you go to our parks, you'll see signs like this. A triangle here, which I'm pretty sure is my tent. Now, I might be all wrong. Some of these, is, I'm kind of going off of memory. There we go. Just like that. Now, in my original, I had three more stoplights here, but I'm not sure. I don't have much room here, so I think I won't put them in this one. So just arrange your picture, whatever works best. Now, up here, perfect spot for a yield sign. So just come on up and finish that triangle. Give it its frame. How you doing here? You're actually almost done with the first step of this picture. Let's see. Would this be a good one to to maybe come above? We didn't come above with that one. So I think I'm going to extend this just a little bit outside the frame. Now, if you did with the, your uh, circles there, you probably won't want to do that with this one. Okay, I had the letter Y there. We're going to worry about our lettering last, which I think is pretty much where we're at. Now, if you would like a uh, video on how to do lettering, well, that would be wonderful. I'm just going to give you a quick tip on this. I like to draw a rectangle the size of the letter I want first. Now, it's really not important here if I have just one letter, the size of it. But if we're going to write the word stop here, they all need to be the same size. But I've got my rectangle. Now, I'm going to try to do this so you can see it. I'm going to go up on this side, curve around, and then you have the letter, the, the, and you have that little hole for the letter P. And you have a nice block letter there that looks like what they use on traffic signs. And then you will erase this extra here. And don't get too uptight about erasing. It's really easiest to do most of the erasing after you have inked it. I wanted to put a Y up here. We don't have, we could, you could write the whole word, word yield if you have a big enough space. I don't, but I'm just going to put the letter Y. So I'm going to put a rectangle here. Reserves a spot. Okay. So we have the straight up and down at the bottom. 
comes clear out to the side and then a V in the center of that. There's our Y and you will want to get those erased. You can do this again as I said now or later. Now to me the hardest part left is writing stop here. Turn it over. So we need to put four rectangles here all the same size so your letters come out the same. And this is about the center. I need to get four in there but they have to have a little space between them because you have space between your letters. So let's Let's try about that size, and you may have to work with this a little bit before you get these the way you like them. But they'll be close enough. And you may just want to just go ahead and write them in in your regular handwriting. That is fine too. Now this one's coming out a little. I didn't get, I didn't get those the same very well at all. <laughs> You know that thing where I said I couldn't draw two things the same way? Yeah, it's kicking in. Anyway, we're going to do S last. S is the hardest one to make. T's are easy. Line across the top. Two lines down the middle, and you have a great T. For O, a great big oval that goes clear to the top and the bottom with a smaller oval inside. Now we're going to make P the same way we did a while ago is a line there on the left, your partial circle there with a circle inside and you have your P. Now S. I'm going to turn this over and show you a way to make S. S's are hard. You may just want to just give in <laughs> and make your regular S and let it go. But if you want to make it look like your um, block letters. In your rectangle, make two circles. Or a figure eight, basically. Within those, each one gets a circle inside. You got that? Now, a line across the top right and a line across the bottom left. Now you actually have your S with two more lines and this is the tricky part. Come across the top, follow your circle, come in and go to the small circle. See that? You're going across the big circle and going into the small circle and up to your cup there. Now for this one we are starting on the small circle and going to the big circle. That. Now if you erase your extra lines Strengthen those out. You will have a perfect block S. These are easy once you've done that a few times, but I'm always having to stop and think my way through it. And look at that S. Now, as small as our picture is, it's still hard to do that. You may be able to accomplish it. Or on this one, I just gave up and made a fat S. <laughs> Let's see what we can do here. But I do like these S's if you can manage to do it. Pretty good S. So let's give it a try. This is so small. Let's see if I can keep it where you'll see it. Two circles. Circle inside. Each one, top right line, bottom left line. Now it's hard to see on there. And I really won't be able to erase that till I've inked it. 
But there's my S. I think that's everything I had on here. So I think I'm going to add just one more circle right here just to fill in this spot. And I'm going to do this circle freehand. And I can decide about how I want to color that later. And we have our drawing done. So just keep adding. You may want to add things to all these other spots and fill it up more. You do it the way you want to do it. I would love to see your work. Now you could just go ahead and finish this as a pencil piece, but it's really a lot cuter with a lot of color. And I try to stay to the traffic colors as close as I can, which red, yellow, green, a dash of blue, and maybe a little bit of brown works great. So the next step will be to ink this. I'm going to start inking it and then I will just skip on ahead and if you would like to color with me I think we're going to watercolor this so if you would like to watercolor along with me that will be right after I ink this or you can just stop now and take off and do your own thing okay to ink this find you a pen that will not um, smudge if you're using markers or watercolor I'm using a sharpie pen the very fine line one and to ink just carefully follow your pencil lines now the secret to inking is to go slow I feel like we have a tendency to just want to rush through this part because we already have set out what we want and we want to just get through this and you know, you don't have to ink at all. A lot of pictures are done without inking. And then there is the style with inking. For this particular picture, I really like having it inked. So that all the different signs stand out. And it's tempting, as I say, to rush down that line. But take it slow. Watch where you're going. And you'll make fairly straight lines. Now, on circles, I like to kind of go to the left if you're right-handed. Now, left-handed people will probably go the other way. And do the same thing, but I'm not going to push it for a long ways. I may go that far and need to switch my paper. Now, here's another little trick. When you restart, be sure you're right on that line and make it as smooth. Now, you can see a little joggle there. And it takes some practice to do this without making dots where your ink goes back down. Ink tends to make a dot wherever you stop, wherever you start. So you have to be very careful with that. And be sure you start right on the line. Well, I'm going to finish this and I'll be back with you with the finished one and we will start painting it.